In this module, we will discuss stored waypoints, which are en route, conditional, and DME arc. We'll also discuss created waypoints. First, let's look at en route waypoints. Waypoints stored in the NAV database, such as VORs and Vortex, named intersections and reporting points are identified by their official identifier or name. NDBs are stored in the database. They can be identified by the station identifier. Non-directional beacons associated with approaches are identified by their official name, not the identifier. Some waypoints in the database have the same identifier. Selecting an identifier that is not unique automatically displays all of the possible waypoints on the Select Desired Waypoint page. Selecting either the desired station frequency or latitude longitude automatically enters that waypoint. Selecting an identifier that is not stored in the database displays the FMS CDU message, not in database. Question. Answer A is correct. Let's now discuss conditional waypoints. Conditional waypoints are waypoints that do not have a fixed geographical position. Variables such as wind can cause the geographical position of certain waypoints to change. Conditional waypoints are associated with departure and arrival procedures. They are automatically displayed and cannot be entered manually. Conditional waypoints occur when passing an altitude, crossing a radial or bearing, passing a DME distance, intercepting a course, or receiving radar vectors. Passing an altitude and Intercepting a course, conditional waypoints are displaced with parentheses on the legs page. Now let's look at DME arc waypoints. Waypoints associated with published DME arc procedures are normally identified in the NAV database by a D, followed by the radial, and then a letter. E indicates a DME arc. 252 is the VOR radial. X is the distance of the DME arc radius. In this example, the letter X is 24. This is the distance of the arc from the vortex. Another way to determine the numeric value of a letter is by using the letters on the FMS CDU. In this example, the distance of the DME arc from the vortex is the letter J, or 10 miles. When the DME arc is greater than 26 miles, a single DME waypoint is identified by the NAVAID identifier and DME distance. Multiple DME waypoints are identified by the first two letters of the NAVAID identifier, the DME distance, and a sequence letter. In these examples, a 40 DME arc is depicted for Spokane GEG and a 29 DME arc for Muddy Mountain, MDM. Question.
Answer C is correct. Let's discuss created waypoints. Waypoints which are not stored can be created or entered as a place-bearing distance, a place-bearing place-bearing, a latitude-longitude, airway crossing, latitude or longitude reporting point, or a distance along the track. Let's look at the place-bearing distance method first. A place-bearing distance waypoint is created by entering the place, followed by the bearing, a slash, and the distance. Any waypoint can be used as the place. Entering the place-bearing distance in the route abbreviates the scratch pad entry to a five-character identifier. Line selecting a waypoint identifier displays the place bearing distance in tenths of a degree and miles. Now let's define a waypoint by place bearing, place bearing. The intersection of two bearings or radials also defines a waypoint. In this example, the intersection of the SEA-115 and the EPH-250 radials are being used to create a waypoint. Entering place bearing, place bearing in the route abbreviates the scratch pad entry to a five-character identifier. Line selecting the waypoint identifier displays the place bearing distance in tenths of a degree and miles. From the first place bearing that was typed into the scratch pad when the place bearings were first defined. Now, let's create a waypoint by latitude longitude. Latitude and longitude can be used to create any waypoint. Notice that there is no space or slash between the latitude and longitude entries. When entered into the route, the waypoint is assigned an abbreviated latitude-longitude identifier. Line selecting the waypoint identifier into the scratch pad displays the entire latitude-longitude. Question. Answer C is correct. Answer A is correct. Now, let's look at airway crossing points. When the intersection of two airways is defined in the navigation database, that intersection will be the airway crossing point. When the intersection of two airways is not defined in the navigation database, the FMC creates an airway crossing point. The waypoint is stored as a latitude-longitude. Let's now look at latitude or longitude reporting points. Reporting points can be created where a specific latitude or longitude will be crossed. In this example, the longitude of west 060 and intervals of 10 degrees are used to create the reporting points.
The desired reporting points are created by line selecting the scratch pad entry over any waypoint prior to the first reporting point. The FMS places the waypoints in the proper sequence. West 060 and the newly created reporting points are now automatically displayed in the correct order to the destination. Finally, let's look at identifying an along track waypoint. An along track waypoint is used to add a new waypoint along the current route. The new waypoint is created by referencing an existing route waypoint followed by a slash and then the distance. In this example, we are creating a new waypoint 25 nautical miles past the reference route waypoint. Along track waypoints can only be entered on the legs page over the reference waypoint. Creating a new waypoint before the reference route waypoint requires the entry of a negative distance.